and uh, it'll be a good time of celebrating. I, I want to just get right into God's word today. Um, I want to start off in a few different scriptures. I want to, can you go to that first scripture, that slide? I want to start in Mark chapter 10. I want to read in verse 17. Um, a story of the rich young ruler says this, as he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except for God alone. You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and your mother. And then he says this, and, and he said to him, teacher, I have kept all these things from my youth. And looking at him, Jesus felt a love for him and said to him, hey, there is one thing that you lack. Go and sell all that you possess. Give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Here's the deal. Verse 22 says this, but at these words, he was saddened and he went away grieving for he owned so much property. I, I want to talk to you today from the subject, fans or family? Fans or family? I think that there is a, 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 a huge difference of someone who's a fan of Jesus or a fan of church and someone who's family with Jesus and family with the church. I, I think there's a massive difference, and it's my desire today to bring attention to us because I think that in, in, in an American Christianity that we have today, there are tons of fans, lots of people. I love God. I'm, uh, I'm sold out for God. I'm all in. And I think there's a difference between when you are a fan and when you're family. In fact, a few, a few weeks ago, uh, watching the NFL, and the NFL, and I, I love watching football, and it's so weird that there's no fans inside the stadium. And one of the coaches says that the crazy part is that the, the only people that's really allowed in the stadiums these days are the ones who have an impact on the field. Those who have no impact on the field, they're not allowed in the stadium. In fact, it's only the people who, who can make a difference on the field. The fans are not allowed. I think what we're doing and what God is doing with the American church and what he's doing is that he's only allowing those who are on the team. He's only allowing those who are having an impact on the field, who's making a difference in the world. The fans, it seems to be going away. And I think that what the Lord wants to do today is that he wants to reveal to us who's a fan and who's family today. Let me pray. God, would you speak to us for the next 22 minutes and 34 seconds? God, we need a word from you, Lord. I pray that you may help me to share this the way that you've given it to me. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. So it's my desire uh, for us to, to figure out, are we a fan or are we family? I, I, I want to propose to you that God's calling us to be family. And there's a, there's a different expectation that comes with being family. You know, like there's lots of the things uh, a fan, a fans can celebrate the wins and they can be far away with the lo losses. But uh, I want to talk to you today because what I've noticed is that there, there are a lot of fans. There are a lot of people who are expecting God to perform for their pleasure. There are a lot of people who come to God as a football team where they come into the stadium, they shout really loud because they want their team or their God to win on their behalf. And then what happens is when the game is over, you're not going into the locker room, you're not going to practice, you're not going to the film study room. In fact, you're going home. And what God wanted to, to, for me to share with you all today is that I think that there is a season where God wants you to say, you know what, I'm no longer going to be a fan of God, but I want to be family with God. There's a whole different expectation that comes with family. You know, and my first point today is that with family or fan, a fan wants benefits, families carry the burden. A fan wants benefit, but a family uh, carries 
the burden. I, I, I remember growing up, I had this friend named Mikey. Mikey was like the guy that everybody hung out with at church, I mean, at, at, in our neighborhood. One of our favorite f- friends to hang out with, he had the trampoline. Anybody have one of those people in the neighborhood that they have a trampoline? The dude had a go-kart. I know y'all know what those things are, but it's like these little dangerous things where you're going to hurt yourself, and he had a go-kart. And Mikey had all the fun stuff. It was like the place to be. We were going to his backyard. We were going to a trampoline. And we would do it almost every day. And after a while, Mikey stopped inviting us. It was like, Mikey, like, what, what's going on? Like, we, we, we want to go on a trampoline. We want to ride the go-kart. We want to we play basketball in your backyard. And he says, hey, I can't have you guys come anymore. I said, why? He said, whenever you all come, you make a mess. And you don't have to clean it up, but I have to clean it up. So you are no longer invited. And it was in that moment I realized that Mikey had a burden because he was family of that household that I didn't have. And so I got to participate in the trampoline jumping and the go-kart riding and having a good time playing basketball in Mikey's backyard, but I didn't have to carry the burden that Mikey had simply because I wasn't family. Can I tell you today that when you are a fan of God, you can enjoy all the benefits. You can come to church and enjoy the great worship music and hear the, the sermons and, and check your, your kids into child care. And it's an amazing time. But there, there is a different burden that you carry when you're a family. There's a different expectation. You got to clean up after the barbecue. Come on, somebody. You, you, you got to make sure things are back into order and all the crowds have left and all the people have left and the, and the music is turned down from the barbecue and now it's just you and these dishes and this trash and this mess and you have to clean it up because you are a family. And can I tell you today, God says to me, God says to us today that it's time for us to not only enjoy the benefits of Christianity, but it's time for us to pick up the burden of Christianity. Now let me do some teaching real quick. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, it says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now when I read that, I thought that when I became a Christian, there's no burden for me to carry. Like I thought that what happens is, is that like I, there's just no burden. There's no weight to this thing. I give myself to Jesus, give my life to Jesus. I'm like, oh, man, this is amazing. Praise God. I can live this fun-filled life, and I can enjoy this amazing freedom that I have in God. It's so amazing. And, but I just want to convince you and tell you that that scripture is not talking about the weight that we carry as God's people. That scripture is talking about the weight of sin. And really, really, when you really break down that scripture, what he's saying is that I don't want to take away your burden. I just want to give you another way and a new way of how to carry it. Can you bring me that suitcase right, right here? Now, so let me kind of give you an illustration. Like this suitcase is really, really heavy and it's got lots of stuff inside of it. And it would be very annoying if I would take this suitcase throughout the airport and I would carry this thing throughout the airport, knocking people out and, and hitting people, and, I'm, and it's super heavy. But here's what God says. God says, I'm not going to tell you to get rid of your suitcase. I'm just going to give you a new way of how to operate your suitcase. And so the burden that was once heavy and the burden that was once uh, uh, too heavy for you to carry now Jesus comes in the scene and says, I want to give you a new way how to carry your burden, but you still got a burden to carry. I like, I like what he says in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, he says this, Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must first deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. There is a burden that comes with you. You got to bring and hold your weight up. And I think that we're living in this Christianity where it's so easy to become a Christian and it's so, and the, and the morals and the standards have changed. And so therefore you can do whatever and you can be a fan and you can, you can have all the benefits, but don't carry no burden at all. And I just want to encourage you all today that in this faith that we follow, this, this thing that we follow, you're, if you want to be a family, you got to be willing to not only enjoy the benefits of Christianity, but you got to be willing to carry the burden of Christianity. 
You got to be ready to get dirty. You got to get ready to, 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 to give your life to God. You got you to be ready to show up early. You got to be ready to serve your church and, and love on people next to you and, and do things in people's lives that they don't have. Like, you got to be ready for these things because if you're not ready, here's what's going to happen. You will turn into a fan and not family today. I, I, I want to encourage you all today in this season and in this time, it's so easy to be a fan. Like, the fans are easy, and I love the benefits of Christianity. Don't get me wrong. I love the blessings of the Lord. I love how God comes in our lives. I love how God can touch our lives and heal our lives. But can I tell you all today that if we're going to enjoy the benefits of family, we've got to be willing to carry the burden of a family. Mikey stopped inviting us over because we didn't want to carry the burden. And there's a burden to this thing. And I just want to remind us that we're going to have to have to get our weight up a little bit. We're going to have to serve a little harder, pray a little harder, be a part of uh, advancing God's kingdom. Because what happens is what, what we have created is a Christianity is for your convenience, which is my second point. And so you either can choose convenience or you need to choose commitment. I'm asking you today that not only as family do you enjoy convenience, but you also enjoy commitment. You also enjoy like the, the, the day in grind of following God and serving God. You, you, you have to enjoy that. I love what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. It says this, that I have beat my body and make it, 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 make it a slave so that after I have preached the other, I myself may not be disqualified from the race. This thing will require commitment. And I just think that sometimes the life that we have, the life that we live, man, it's so easy to enjoy the convenience of Christianity, but not willing to endure the commitment that comes with it. And so oftentimes what we do is that we love the convenience of a new life, but not the commitment to build one. We love the convenience of a miracle, but not the commitment to work and to strive towards that miracle. Can I tell you today that when we need a miracle for God all the time, that is a bad sign. Like, I always thought, like, oh, God, I want to be in a position where I need a miracle. And I need a miracle. If we need a miracle financially, that is a, that is a byproduct of sometimes a life of not bad stewardship. Like, if we need a, we need a miracle in relationships, maybe, maybe there is a, that's a process of unhealthy habits that led to that miracle. I'm not saying for you to desire miracles from God. But what I am saying is that don't put yourself in a position where you always need a miracle from God. Because there is a commitment, a daily focus, a daily coming to God, a daily going after God that will, will, will allow us to become family and not a fan. Like, I, I think in a, just what we're dealing with right now. In, in the country, in the world that we're living with, like the, the world that we're in, there's lots of fans. There's lots of people who want to call on the name of the Lord. And lots of people who want to say, God, I'm all in. God, I'm ready for this thing. But oftentimes what we, what we experience is that they're not ready to go in to be a family. They're not ready to go in and, 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 and be faithful. Like Because, you know, there's lots of people, like I love having babies. Like I love babies, y'all. Like, babies is amazing. I love the babies in the church. I love the little infants. And I love that I get to kiss on those babies and hug those little babies. And the favorite part about babies that I love today, that I can give them back. Come on, somebody. I can just... I can rev them up and get them excited and give them all the candy that I want and enjoy all that stuff. And I can enjoy the convenience of that child, but I don't have to experience the commitment to take care of that child. Here's why. Because I'm not family. And I think some of us, it's like we come to God like a little baby. God, I love your presence. God, I love your healing. And God, I love the money that you give. I love the blessing that you give. But God, I'm not willing. I want to just give it back when it gets hard. I want to just give it back when it's inconvenient. I, I, I want to give it back when, when the pastor asks to serve or when the pastor asks to give or when the pastor asks to go to your neighbor and love on them and to go to the streets of those who have been forgotten about and love on them. Like, it's, it's time for us to say, you know what? I am no longer going to be a fan of God hanging out on the sidelines or hanging out in the stands because in God's kingdom, I'm telling you what, there is only family. 
And I, I love like what we're going to do when we first thing we're going to get to heaven is that we're going to have a huge, massive barbecue. And I tell you, I say almost every week that I, that's one of my favorite things I can't wait to do. We're going to do when we get to heaven is have a barbecue in heaven. And it's going to be a massive table. The table is going to be long. The table is going to be set. And unfortunately, you know, I grew up in my grandma's, my grandma had two type of uh, 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 eating situations. We had the place where we would eat every day that our friends would eat at. But then we had like the formal dining room. You know, the ones where like the, the glass uh, the glass case and the glass china is there, and it's really nice. And it's only only special people are invited to that table. In fact, to this day, I've only eaten at my grandmother's formal dining room a few times in my life. Here's why: because you got to be in a special place to be invited to that dining room. And I want to let you know today that right now God is giving all of us the invitation to be family, so that when that time comes, we can be invited. To to that special dining room that God has set for us. It's time for us to leave being a fan and to become family. You know, like I, I really believe this, that we got to move from just wanting benefits but carrying the burden. We got to move from just wanting convenience to now being committed. And then my last point is this, that we got to move from just wanting freedom and tap into what I call the fear of God. Y'all remember the fear of God? You remember that? And the fear of God, and it, it, it's not a concept that is foreign to many of us, but it's a concept that is foreign to our souls. And what I mean by the fear of God is that I mean that, that there are times in life where we have to honor God. There is, a, there is a reverence towards God. There is a honor towards God. There it is. There is like God is watching me, so I need to act a certain way. There, there is a respect towards God. So I, I remember, like, growing up, and, uh, like, my mom is, like, anybody, anybody meet my mom, she's one of the, the sweetest ladies ever. It's just sweet. She's quiet. She don't talk much. When she do talk, you listen. And my mom is just sweet. She's just nice. And my friends would come over, and they would enjoy my mom. They would say, man, you got the best mom ever. Your mom loves you so much. And, and I, I really did have the best mom ever. She is absolutely amazing. And she's amazing, amazing lady. And um, I remember, though, is that, like, they didn't see the mom that I saw. They only saw, like, the mom that would invite them in and, and, you know, give them some food and hang out with them. But as soon as my friends leave and that door is closed and that room is dirty, it is chaos in that house. Come on, somebody. I mean, the belt comes out, the switch comes out, it all comes out. I'm like, Mom, you were a different person five minutes ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get a different viewpoint when you're family, right, than you do when you're a friend or a fan. And I just want to let you know today that sometimes, like, we got to, we got to change our viewpoint that not only is our God the nice, grace God, and he loves everybody, but he's also the truth God. Come on, somebody. He's also the fear of God type God. He's also the God that he wants us to honor him. We got we to gotta get the whole perspective of who our God is. He's not, he's not only a God who forgives, but he will be a God who one day will judge. Not only he's a God who we see sometimes and he goes after the 99 and, and goes after that one person, but he's also a God that one day when the end of the world comes, there will be a time where he has judgment over the world. And it's just my desire today that as COVID has gotten rid of fans, I pray that today that there's no longer fans in our church, that there's only family and it's only people who can carry this. And here's what I love, is that when we enjoy the benefits and carry the burden, when we enjoy the convenience and have commitment, when we enjoy the freedom of God and have the fear of God, here's what happens. When we are a family, we now have access to the successes of the family. Come on, somebody. When you are a fan, I'm a huge LeBron James fan, 
and I pray that he wins the next championship in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. But I know that I'm going to watch that television, and I'm going to be so excited when he holds up that trophy, and it's going to be amazing. And guess what? That television show is going to end, and he will have the championship ring, and all I will have is just a feeling that will go away in a few months. Can I tell you that when you are family, when you are on the team, you get more than just a feeling from God. You get more than just a touch from God. You get access to the championship that he has won on your behalf because your God is a champion. Your God is undefeated. Your God has never lost. And when you tap into his team and when you tap into his family, you now have access to it. Woo! Hear me, guys. What I see all the time, Pastor, why isn't God moving? Pastor, where is God? Pastor, I, I'm stuck. I'm broken. My marriage is falling apart. My life is falling apart. My future seems somewhat unclear. The distance between my family and I is so big, is so big, Pastor. And God says this to me, and God wanted me to tell y'all this. That it's time, there are certain benefits and there's certain access you get when you are family that you don't get when you're a fan. And I just think that some of us, we're missing out on so much of the blessings of God and the restoration of God simply because we are just fans in the background in the stands. We love you, God. God calls us to serve. I'm out of here, God. Some of us, we're, we're in the background like, oh God, we, we, we're all in with you. We, we love the freedom of God, but we have no fear of God. There's no honor. There's no reverence towards God. There's no respect towards God. And I just think that the Lord wants to change the game for us. He wants to remove everybody that's in the stands and bring it down to the sideline. And the cool thing about God's sideline, that everybody plays. I remember when I grew up and, and I was a little skinny kid and I didn't have much athletic ability when I was younger. I would go to the sideline and I would sit on the bench, y'all. They even had a song, put me in coach. I'm ready to play today. And the coach never used to listen to me. I would just sit on that sideline. But that one day, when the tight end in front of me got hurt, and we were playing against a, uh, a team, and they threw me a little pop pass. I caught the pop pass. The safety missed me. I ran in for a touchdown. I realized this, that on God's sideline, you don't ride the bench. There are no second places. We are all in the game. We're all making a difference. We're all changing the world. And I just really believe this, no matter who you are watching this online or in this room today, that your God says, get off the stands, get off the sideline, and get on the field. It's time for us to make a difference in the world around us. So to recap, when you are a friend, when you are a family, you enjoy the benefits and the burden. When you're family, you enjoy the convenience, but also you're committed. And when you're family, you enjoy the freedom of God, but you also recognize the fear of God. Maybe you're watching this today. Maybe you don't feel like family today. Maybe you walked away from the family of God and God says, time to come back home. I love this about our God, that he's always inviting you into his house. He's always saying, no matter who you are, no matter what experience you have, no matter what your past looks like, it don't even matter what you're struggling with right now. It don't matter what you did last night. The God of the universe wants to invite you at his table today. In fact, there is a, there's a God who wants, to, who wants to be family with you. He wants to say, you know what? It's time for you to go all in. It's time for you to not only receive the benefits of what I can offer for you, but I also want to give you the burden that you need to carry every single day. It's time to be committed. It's time to reverence God today. And if you want to accept Christ and your Lord and Savior today, and you'll make a difference, and you want him to come in your life and, and change everything about you, and you'll be a family, I can tell you that your, your physical last name won't change. 
but man, you, you will be a brand new creation. And the old will be gone, and behold, the new will come, simply because of what God wants to do in your life today. I want to pray for you. Would you all close your eyes and bow your heads right now? God, I pray a blessing over every soul, God. God, would you bless them, Lord Jesus? God, I pray for those who don't feel like family, who, who's, who's walked away, God. Those who feel like they, they are, they're no longer on the team, Lord. I pray, God, that you may touch them, Lord Jesus. For God, for those who feel like that they have disqualified themselves from being family, God, I pray, God, that you may remind them that they, nothing they can do can qualify them for being in God's house, only the grace of God. But Lord, I pray for those who are Christians here today, Lord. For those who have wandered to the stands and become a fan and left the family. God, I pray, God, that you may call them back into the house. Lord, I pray that you may bless them, that you may touch them, Lord. And God, I know that you are a faithful God, that you would do what you do in our lives, Lord. Bless every soul here today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise for God.